He's left me. The close relations continue at the same time next week on BBC One. your girlfriend and insulted your boss stop you all you need is a beautiful girl oh, she was gorgeous wasn't she it tells you I feel. <laughs> a game that you love <laughs> and of course des Lynham. you've obviously heard there's a football match on tonight this has been the best 19 days of my life not the football you neil morrissey takes you back to euro 96 tomorrow at nine on bbc one you're watching BBC One, so this is how they said it would be. It's all crystal balls. Experts. The world has always been full of experts. Confident men certain of what was going to happen in the future. Men like Charles Duell, director of the US Patents Office, who recommended that the office be shut down in 1899 because everything that could ever be invented had been invented. <laughs> Or Alex LeWitt, president of the LeWitt Corporation, who in 1955 confidently predicted the imminent arrival of the nuclear vacuum cleaner. <laughs> T. Watson Sr., president of IBM in 1943, who predicted that total world sales of computers ever would be five. <laughs> or the director general of the Zambian Academy of Space Research who predicted that the first Zambian astronaut would reach the moon by 1965 using a very large catapult. <laughs> Where would we be without experts? Since the dawn of time, mankind has predicted the future. Great men and women have forecast the world of tomorrow. These brave words have not been forgotten. They march forward relentlessly into the future. These predictions which experts have made were heralded as great words of wisdom in their own age. Now the time has come for them to be judged against reality. Have they stood the test of time? Or are they just crystal balls? Good evening. It was the editor of the Daily Express who, when he received a surprise visit from the inventor of television, Mr. John Logie Baird, said, for God's sake, go down to reception and get rid of a lunatic down there. He says he's got a machine for seeing by wireless. <laughs> and watch out, he may have a razor. <laughs> but amazingly, here we all are on Mr. Baird's invention for the first of an occasional series in which we'll take a look at how the experts of the past predicted we'd be living now. It was on BBC television in 1977 that the Horizon programme, after a lot of expert scientific help, put together what they thought the main evening news would look like today. This is BBC News Channel 8, your news host Harry Cass and Chris Chapman. The Queen's Jubilee tour, planned for two weeks' time, will be postponed. This is because the August weather has had to be delayed for a week. There's been another accidental release of cloud seed by the weather satellite, and it'll be several days before the weather returns to plan. Yarmouth fishing water can not be able to offer their jubilee bloaters. Last night, at least two herring shoals swam through the gap in the bubble fence. <laughs> Yarmouth fishers say it was underwater tourists leaving the gate open. They're offering a reward for anyone returning the shoals and say the fish answer their code calls. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, chillingly accurate. <laughs> Apart from the costumes, the presenters and everything they said. <laughs> they actually thought we'd have controllable weather, trained fish, underwater tourism and a popular royal family. Ludicrous. <laughs> Now, if there is a point, it's that the experts thought we'd get much further, much faster than we have done. For instance, we've been on the verge of getting domestic robots for years and years now.